Like many other Māori who've relocated to Australia, Baden Murray moved here with a dream. Coming to Australia was like being born again. Just um, yeah, you had an opportunity to do something that you didn't really have in New Zealand. So um, we came over, hoping to get a better life. Mm -hmm. Started driving trucks. I guess it was seven years after we were here, we managed to get our own truck. For 10 years on after that, we were only drivers driving all around Australia. Yeah. And it was just like, wow, <laughs> pinch me, is this real? <laughs> And you're still a truckie? I am, uh, not as much as I used to. Probably the last 10 years, we clocked up 2 million k's on our truck uh, around Australia, and uh, Elaine just thought, you know, about time you sort of come off the road, mm. come off the road do a bit around home or whatever. And the whatever was like, what are we going to do? <laughs> Little did Baden know that what they'd eventually do would turn out to be something hugely popular, and it was literally right there in their own backyard, in the middle of the Lockyer Valley. The Lockyer Valley is an area of rich farmlands that lies to the west of Brisbane and east of Toowoomba, here in Queensland. It's rated among the top 10 most fertile farming areas in the world and grows the most diverse range of commercial fruit and vegetables of any area in Australia. In fact, the valley is often referred to as Australia's salad bowl. And now contained within that bowl is a leaf vegetable that Aussies refer to as a noxious weed. But we Māori refer to it as a true delicacy. Like you say, the salad bowl uh, of Australia, all the growers around here that believe that puha is a obnoxious weed. And so long as they keep thinking that, we'll be right. <laughs> Five acres, we can grow some puha. We've always had a puha patch, but not something on this scale. Just yeah. enough for feed for us and the kids. We'd get our seeds from around the country. We'd see a puha plant and look, look at that. And we'd grab the plant, we'd grab the seeds off the plant. And we just saved the seeds up and brought them home until we managed to grow what we have here from the seeds we picked out around Australia. So why Puha? No one else is really doing it. We looked up on the internet to see if anyone's growing Puha and wow, there isn't anyone doing this. And we've been doing it for ourselves on a small scale. There are a lot of Kiwis in Australia, so let's see how we go. So took the gamble to buy a bit of farm machinery and we've always had five acres out here and decided let's go with it. And it was all sort of start from scratch, learn from scratch. The difference between what we do and what you get off the side of the road is we don't use herbicides or pesticides. That's right. You know, uh, everything is natural. It's more, it's probably as close to organic as you get. Too hard to be. It's fresh. It's tasty. You can have it in salads, in fact. And yeah. uh, it's just one of those vegetables that have gone unnoticed for so long, and we're just trying to put it back on the table. Yeah. You know, for our people. For the generations that missed out on what puha is all about, well, this is what it's all about. Elaine's also done some research into the nutritional benefits of puha. It comes up in all the studies as being very high in a lot of minerals, uh, vitamin A, D, it's a whole collection of things. And um, there's a lot of health studies done and the um, benefits of it is uh, anti-cancer too and wow. anti-aging. She's also come up with a few other clever recipes for puha as well. It's just um, like the basil pesto, just a puha version, and it's brilliant. There's a few different options, you know, just as you would use with your pasta or whatever. Yeah. Just, it's just a nice option to have. So I dare say puha is a staple in the Murray Fuddy. <laughs> it's very. 365 days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> must be so used to this stuff, puha. Do you have it for breakfast, lunch and tea? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yep. Yummy though, oh, so good. It's delicious. This puha patch is a real whānau affair, isn't it? They do get off the bus, they ride their bikes up, they come straight out to the garden, pick the trays up and they're straight into what we're doing. And without their input, that job just becomes twice, if not three times it's as hard. It's a long job without them. It's a very so long, fast. yeah. And um, they're just so helpful to us and we're so grateful for their help. 
you know, despite how young they are, they put in what any adult would put in. What are you guys up to, Melvin? Uh, just filling the bags up, and then Phoebe weighs them to make sure they're a kilo. No, they're not even a kilo yet. The popular puha is now distributed to several supermarkets and butchers throughout Queensland, and now it seems word has got out to Māori living in other states as well. We've definitely got orders to go to Melbourne tonight uh, to be there tomorrow for our customers. Sorry, did you just say that you're going all the way to Melbourne to deliver some puha? Yes, that's right. How many kilometres are we talking? Uh, 1,700 kilometres from Brisbane. People down in Melbourne haven't got the same access to puha like they have here in Brisbane. So when I get that opportunity to run to Melbourne on one of the fridge trucks, I like to say, look, we can bring it down to you if you guys want it please order and we'll be happy to bring it down for you. And we've got orders to go tonight to Melbourne, so they'll have it tomorrow night. Do you mind having a passenger tonight? Not at all, I'd love, yes, I'd be happy for you to come along, absolutely. Yes, there's, there's plenty of room in the truck. Night falls and it's time to get on board with Baden for the long journey ahead. This is a regular weekly trip for him, taking produce to the Melbourne markets. But tonight, we've also got 100 kg of puha to deliver. Righto, Baden, so we're off on our adventure making our way to Melbourne. How many Ks? Mate, 1740 odd Ks down to Melbourne. That many? That's like, uh, how many hours are we talking? Uh, mate, we took about an 18 and a half hour drive. Um, yeah, and a 10 hour break on the way down. Got to deliver the puha to the hungry Māori in Melbourne. Got to get the puha through, yes indeed. Can't let the whānau down down there. So we're on a mission, uh, not just with our load, but with their load as well. Kapai, Melbourne, here we come. Melbourne, here we come indeed. Before we knew it, it was time to pull in for a good old truckies breakfast and a chance for Baden to check in with his interstate customers. You still on for your seven kilos of puha today, Ray? No, I'm uh, probably seven hours out of Melbourne at the moment. Okay, thank you, Ray. If you're the bathe, port bones are on, what time are you arriving from Labyrinth, Melbourne? Sure. <laughs> so, and a boil up without a poo, huh? It's not a boil up. No. No. It is, but it's a wall wear as well. The final stretch. We arrive just as the sun sets, and the puha deprived Melbourneites start pulling in. Gooda, gooda. Baden. David. Dave, how are you, Dave? Deb. 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 Kia ora. Kia ora. Oh, thank you for being so patient with us and coming oh. such a long way to get the puha. Richard. Hey, Baden. Cuss. How are you? Kia ora. Good to meet you. Mate, thank you for your support. Thank you very, very much, and I'm glad that you're following us. Uh, next time, hey, Baden. Oh, kia ora, cuss. Thank you. Cheers, bro. Yeah, bro. So, what's the alternative for puha over here? Kale? No, cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> cabbage or cabbage spinach. Cabbage or spinach. Yeah. You yeah. know? Not the same. Oh, look Puha, at that, eh? all the way from the Lockyer Valley yeah. in Queensland. Look at that beautiful Arno. Looking forward to having a feed with some pork bones and some brisket. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's awesome, mate. It's all on Facebook all the time. Maldi's haunted. So already Baden has his first lot of happy customers. But there were still more to come in the morning. Our meeting place was Melbourne's Kiwi Pacific store, who were also eagerly anticipating the puha. Thank you, we've been waiting for this. Oh, sorry, it's a little bit late, but it's just uh, here. Alright, we've got some mutton bursting, so this will go really well with it. Hey, Baden! How are you going? Hey, going? Hey, going? Hey, going? Hey, going? Hey, going? Yeah, yeah, good boy, good boy. Oh, too much, you alright? Yeah, yeah. Hey, gee, you don't look very many there, you weigh up properly. Oh, but that extra is there for you, my mate. Oh. Good to meet you. 
Oh, something you'd be wanting. Oh, about time. <laughs> yes, that's been good. Been waiting for this. How far did you come from today to come here? Oh, about an hour. Hard to get uh, constant supply. Um, you're not allowed to go and pick your own uh, through the regulations. So uh, yeah, this it's perfect. Is there no puha growing in Melbourne? Oh, I know that there is, but you don't know who, who's dog or what people done business on honour, so <laughs> it, you, you'll get a different taste for sure. <laughs> Good fun, oh. yeah, done and dusted here in Melbourne, 1700 kilometres later, um, 80 hours on the road, 10 hours in the bunk, customers are happy, 100 kilos delivered, just like that. And what an amazing journey it's been. All that way to deliver Puha. And he'll be doing it all again next week. If you Māori people want some sour thistle, get the puha patch a whistle. Kaki te anō.